Well, thanks for coming back to the Bigfoot Society podcast. I have the uh, privilege of having Mr. Evan B. Stone. Uh, you might rec recognize him from things such as uh, Destination Truth, Expedition Unknown, uh, Finding Bigfoot. Uh, he was involved with that. And uh, also things like Ghost Nation. And the list goes on and on if you check out his IMDb. So, um, Evan, I'm going to have you go ahead and um, kind of introduce uh, who you are. Yeah, no worries. Hey, guys. Um, excited to be here. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a lifelong filmmaker. My, I come from a family of filmmakers. Uh, my dad was a commercial director. I grew up in New York City. Um, I, in the nine, early 90s, I was music videos, MTV. I was nominated editor of the year with MTV in oh, 93, wow. kind of giving away my age there. But oh, yeah. um, so from there, um, it's been a long road to get to, the big, to working on Destination Truth. Um, the, the, um, um, I started working with the production company, Ping Pong Productions 20 years ago. Okay. And, you know, I was doing all those shows and, um, we did Destination Truth in 09. That's when I started. And, uh, boy, that was Man. something. So it's been wow. ever since then, it's been, uh, I'm the, I guess known as one of the better or the top <laughs> adventure filmmakers in the world. And I would uh, say so. A lot of, yeah, a lot of, you know, I'm also doing Expedition X right now and we just did a Bigfoot thing. So I'm always delving into oh. Bigfoot stuff. And wow, I mean, it's so much to talk about. So that's oh, me. Oh, I know, right? <clears throat> that's, that's crazy. Um, I want to, so I have a, uh, a question for you right off the bat uh, from one of the uh, Patreon uh, guys I have in the Patreon, I want to make sure I don't miss it. So let's, uh, let's get that. Uh, he asks, I would like to know if he ever found himself in a filming situation where he felt scared, or maybe like very apprehensive of what was going on. Yeah, there was, yeah. <laughs> there was, we're in <laughs> Bhutan. I mean, in pertains to this, I was in, we're in Bhutan, uh, looking for their, uh, a Bigfoot. I, I think they called a Yaren there, or yes. maybe, um, mm -hmm. And uh, there was something in the bushes rustling around and mm -hmm. we kind of brought it all to a point where, here you go. Do you want to know what's in the bushes? I mean, this thing was growling. Wow. It was fucking red eyes. It was, it, and I was wow. like, no, actually, I don't. <laughs> like, you no. know when you finally be like, oh, what if he's like wiping his butt or something and he, you, you surprise him, he's just going to kill you. Like, I, there was a point where I didn't want to know what was in there. You know, because right. if okay. it, was a, okay. it was a Bigfoot or a bear or anything, it was going to attack me. So like, no, yeah, I was really yeah. scared. And then we backed off and, and it was, you know, really intense, you know, because, you know, yeah, it could be a Bigfoot, but it could be a, a mountain lion, you know, yeah, like I mean, there yeah. growling, you know. <laughs> mountain lions, like, you know, you have you seen the video that's been going around of the, the guy who, was chased for six minutes by the mountain lion and he had to walk backwards funny. the whole time oh no, no walking honestly. because he stumbled upon a baby a baby mountain lion cub and the mom comes out of nowhere and starts to like almost mess him oh, up but yeah mountain lions are rough dude and yeah, speaking yeah. of that you know there's been quite a few bigfoot hunts where you know you get this sixth sense you're being stalked you know and mm. all of you know apex predators they stalk you from behind and you move they move you know, yeah. they're there, you know, if you did like a thermal drone or something and threw it up in the air, it'd be like animals all around you. In the oh, man. You know, but, but, you mm. know, especially the apex predators, they, they're tracking you. Yeah. And, and you totally. feel it. There's something in your human DNA that knows it, you know? And, and uh, so that's pretty, you know, that's happened a few times. So have you been actually out uh, filming and you felt that like, you're like, there are yeah. things on me right now like close oh yeah for wow sure. oh yeah that's uh, that's crazy often, yeah especially like really out there places like bhutan or mm. um you know um uh, central america jungles you know with mm. a lot of panthers and stuff i mean yeah. yeah yeah yep yep i mean it's like all fun and games you're doing a tv show but you know a lot of times with expedition unknown and mm -hmm. and that one in particular and uh, and destination truth you're really at places haunted place like uh, you know we went to chernobyl yeah. i mean this haunted this people died there so like you're in i forgot about chernobyl place. yeah totally dude that's yeah. nuts so like 
Oh man. You know, you know, so but there. Yeah. Can it's, you do, it's fun. Do you feel comfortable talking about what happened in Romania? Oh wow. Is that okay? Like that, huh? Sure. Yeah. Well, sure. I mean, if you're not I know, cool that's with it. Number one. Number because, one question. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's okay. You know, is it? Yeah. Okay. No. The, here's a story on that one. It's really interesting. I was that was the first episode I did of Expedition Unknown. So oh, man. I mean of Destination of yeah, Destination yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was new, you know, I was coming off of um documentaries. I was working for Al Gore's current TV and you oh, know, wow. I was like, hell yeah, let's let's go let's go, <laughs> you know, bug out in the woods, you know? Yeah. And uh it was a really creepy place, you know, it's a it's a perfect circle, nothing grew there. Oh, yeah. Um it was in this woods that were known in in folklore to be uh strange lights and mm -hmm. all that and also the nazis used it were up there and they had something going on there and they were Oof. experimenting so it's like real stuff yeah and uh i don't remember much but what I, I do remember is i felt like i was like having an lsd flashback or something i remember just being really i was there because we, we were doing something called a haunting i don't know if you know the episode but and, and the mm -hmm. haunting in our in back in the day was we put a, a crew member out there to experience a half hour straight no talking just let it happen and while the the team is hung back at base camp watching and we strung out you know ir cameras and you know yeah. really long uh, cords to make that happen and um i just remember like tripping out like the sky was going one way and the, and the, the ground was going another and something like that i could totally Whoa. like okay i get that my brain is like mm, go nuts yeah. And but then I just felt this wind and it 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 felt like it came down and then up at me and pushed me back. And the last thing I remember was like my feet were almost straight being dragged back. And mm. then I woke up like I was hazy after that. Um, yeah. And I woke up in the woods and they were like, what? I mean, Jael, <laughs> who was there, was really yeah, yeah. A, like concerned. Oh, wow. um, and up, she knows me from current TV. You know, we were working together then. So it was like, she was really concerned about me. And I don't know what yeah. was going on. I was like, wait, what What job did I get into? Like, <laughs> That's episode one that you're on. And yeah. you're like, it's almost and game over. And I was over. like, oh, yeah. and I felt all itchy and stuff. And oh, all that stuff, maybe I could kind of say in my mind was playing tricks on me. But then, the, you know, the scars on my arm, which I still have, <sighs> are like, wow. you know, wow. what was that about? Right? I mean, maybe oh. I could have. I mean, like, okay, like, okay, maybe I ran through some bushes. I don't think so. I mean, it was below no. my, my no. arms, like my, my clothing, you know? Um, mm. It was after that, I was like, you know what? Well, I'm at, we just wrap it up. You know, we had to take these four wheelers th three hours back and it was really, nuts. oh man. Oh, yeah. Dude, and then I, so you know, I, I kind of put it in my memory that, that one and cause you know, it takes a long time for these things to be edited. And then it mm -hmm. takes a long time for these things to be put on air. Yeah. And then, you know, that next season, which was like two years later, is because uh, it was the number one rated show of that season. And oh, yeah, they, they sure. asked the audience what they wanted. They wanted me back in the woods. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. no. And the place was just <laughs> nuts. Um, funny story. Uh, second time we went there, okay. um, we took an airplane around the spot and we're kind of circling it you know and you know it's kind of sad that all of the four it was a forest i mean all of romania was a forest i'm sure but this the, the modern you know the forest is getting smaller and smaller by the time we got there it was a forest around the circle but not much it's and and there was these like you know like these believers in in there like holding hands and do some sort of ceremony you know really and i was like oh my god look at like if oh, his no. words out you know and, like people are there trying to feel something and bugging out the yeah. place we 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 took soil samples i mean it's really weird like why doesn't anything grow there like yeah right I mean, it, no it's it's weird there. dude yeah yeah grass grows there but nothing else um dude you know it's it's cool unexplained and you know romania is like yo that place is like like transylvania it's like gangster, totally you know it's like <laughs> it's like it's it really is though it's like if like if there was like you know mystical beings and werewolves and things yo it's there 
I mean, it's yeah. whole world. You meet it's people crazy. with like a glass eye and a weird look. Mm. Like people have like donkey carts, like a, 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 like attached to like like you know like um flatbeds attached to donkeys. You know, like Man. straight up gypsies. Like wow, the world, the world. It's really <laughs> it's cool, but it's like you could it's old world, and you can yeah. tell like they're what they believe in is so you know and it's one of the things i think about is when you believe in something so much it, it's real you know and they the whole country yes. believes in all these yes. myths um okay. so yeah. it has an energy to it you know yep no yeah. i totally get that you it, it feel you know when you get a whole group of people focusing on something it's like there could be something That's there right. you know like you got to be course. careful yeah you go to a concert and everyone's yep. fucking cheering you're like oh i love you know it's yeah. cool you know, it's but crazy. and then also in religion um and um and that's a thing and and mm -hmm. uh and also in in you know that's a whole nother conversation so let's totally. keep going yeah 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 no thank you for sharing that like that's that's that was amazing um did you uh before you got into shows like uh destination truth and you were you know back before then were you uh interested in uh the weird the unknown Never. or i grew up oh yeah so... no I, okay no i grew up in wow. new york city upper east yeah. side <laughs> i was wow. like a latchkey kid you know like a <laughs> yeah, sure. filmmaker's son you know like i was into like music videos and, and shooting commercials and you know and but here's the but i'm okay. uh i'm a I'm a lead climber, uh, rock, a rock climber, and I'm also a Knowles National Outdoor Leadership School. Oh, yeah. oh cool! Yeah, yeah, um, sure. Yeah. Alumni two okay. times, yeah. uh, advanced courses and everything. So I'm an adventure guy. Like mm. besides the filmmaking, every weekend I went and went rock climbing. I was a lead climber. I would go to Colorado on trips. I'd do big walls. Um, I would do, you know, I was a, a expedition leader by training. So like being in the shit. And being uh, is was like okay. That's mm -hmm. I'm used. I was used to hard work and used to being in uncomfortable positions for long periods of time. And that's what you call mm. that's that's mountaineering. Every step it hurts, man. You got sure. some sores on your feet. Your hips yep. hurt. Your fucking oh, mouth altitude sickness. But you go and you keep trudging along. Um, and so when and also with work, we do 17 hour days all the time still. Oh, wow. Um, and um, it's really hard work. So Man. in a weird way, the more crazy it gets, the more shitty it gets, mm -hmm. the more I get off on it. And that's awesome. OK, yeah, yeah. Josh that's Gates awesome. And me are, Josh Gates and me are the same way. You know, he's an, a mountain climber as well. He did Kilimanjaro. He's yeah, a proper, totally. strong leader. And uh, me and him, when it gets real shitty, we're just like laugh at each other. And it, that gets fun, you know? And, <laughs> I always hey, wondered that, yeah. If, you yeah, know what? Yeah. I mean, here's the whole topic is you have, to, you're making a TV show, right? You mm -hmm. have to, the way you experience, you have to project that to the screen, right? So right. it's not making anything up, but you gotta be as real as you feel. And, sure. if, and sometimes that's hard. So you have to always be shooting. And and, mm. and 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 in the language of film is it depends on what you're shooting and how you shoot it. You know, like if we're shooting um, like these kind of things, it's pretty rough and tumble. Like right. um, it's pretty like they call it gonzo. You know, it's like you want to make the people feel the same as you feel, and that's just comes from experience. You know. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. No. Uh... Uh, I grew up in, in Massachusetts, so I, I appreciate okay. Josh. He's got that that whole Massachusetts, oh, yeah. you know, type deal. He's a cool. I mean, I've never met him, but I, I like his life outlook from what I've seen. So oh my god, he's cool. amazing. He's, yeah. yeah. Do you? Um, so working on a thing like let's say Expedition Unknown, or maybe Finding Bigfoot, uh, versus uh, something like Ghost Nation. Yeah. which has you more apprehensive or maybe a little bit amped up? Is there one where you, you get, I don't more know, or, man, you know, I don't know, man. I tell you, I get the ghost stuff is mm -hmm. I get, it's more, I get, it's more like real to me. Right. Because I've, I'm attuned to that stuff. Like I, I've had someone real close to me pass away. And oh, they, yeah. I, that person was talking, oh, that person uh -oh. was talking 
<laughs> oh, we got I Brian think. Weed. Uh, we got Brian uh, yes. Weed. Hey, here I am. Hey, Brian. Uh, my name is Jeremiah. I'm the host of the Bigfoot Society podcast, and we were cool. just kind of chatting. Thanks for coming on. Um, we are actually live recording right now, so just so you're aware of that. Uh, it's kind of like a first for me to put in someone like this, but um, yeah, uh, Evan, do you mind continuing? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up my story. And I'm gonna introduce uh, yeah my pretty much Perfect. partner in crime Perfect. for the last five years, uh, wow. Brian uh, Brian Weed, Brian C. Weed. But I was talking Brian about how about ghost stuff. He asked me if I'm um, mm. more like attuned to ghost stuff than anything else. And I said, yeah, I am, because in my life, I've had someone dear pass away to me. And, and this is when it first started mm -hmm. getting a tune. That person was speaking through two separate friends of mine that don't know each other, coming to me right. saying, this person's talking to me, saying the same thing, right? And that was a real, like, oh my God, really? And it was really hard because these people are, are legit and they would never do something like that, which is like mess with someone after someone died. You know, it's mm, like, yeah. so these people, it's, it's tough, you know, it, and also, you know, Expedition Unknown, we did a, a whole four part series on the afterlife. And I would suggest mm -hmm. our viewers to, to watch it. And one of the segments was about this doctor. He worked at um, Bellevue Hospital in New York and okay. Bellevue is a place where it's like, it's real, like, real hardcore like blood trails wow. go to the end to the end to the emergency room you know so people oh, wow. die there a lot this guy yeah. gets called when it's time when someone died and it's a beep this mm -hmm. guy gets called from one of the floors to come down and do whatever he can he's like the the he's called, they call him wolf you know he's the doctor right oh, he gets he's yeah. he's the last chance for these people oh, man. and what he says is because he's seen a lot of death he says interestingly enough interestingly enough when people die when he brings them back, they remember things that they shouldn't because they're flatlined and their brain's dead. And they also remember colors and things and they have this view from above. So what he started mm -hmm. doing was putting colors and numbers on top of things that you can only see from above. And he said, out of the no. hundred pay, you know, out of the hundred people, three of them have told him things that were that were like, okay, you only knew that because you were floating above. So what he now this is a legit guy, this ain't no quack. He mm -hmm. said that five minutes, he said, I can guarantee, you, I could tell you this, five minutes after someone's dead, their, their brain's dead, everything's dead, they're still conscious. Wow. Okay. And then he's, then, and then he's, and then after we cut, I said, Hey man, because I, because I've had someone dear die to me. I said, tell me more about that. He goes, I could tell you this, it's five minutes, but who knows? Could be more. I mean, why would, I can only say five minutes, but right. So, and and Brian, you know, has a thing. Is his energy is what is it? What do you say, Brian? What's your thing? You know about energy. What, what do you mean? I mean oh, energy. Uh, it, it, energy. So energy um, can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. Okay. Sure. So I mean, so now I'm thinking like, okay, you know, it's it's, I, and also once once my doors of perception were open, so to speak. I feel it a lot more now, whether I want to bring it in or not, I'm not like, I don't want to bring it in. Cause it's, That's a, the thing. it's like, yep. uh, you know, it's yep. like, I don't yep. want it to take my life over, but it's there. And humans have that ability to go there. And, but we just block it all out with all this, everything really. I agree. hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. We pave the world, you know, and, and I yep. think by paving the world, we're, we're, we're trapping its mana, you know, it's yeah. energy and yeah. all that magic that comes with it. Um, and I think it's a, a big ploy by, you know, you know, the evil people that are running it to do that because yeah. then, so what, you know, to pave the world, to pave the world. So you trap the earth. I don't understand. That doesn't make any sense. Come on, Stone. All right. So just to let everyone, our viewers <laughs> know a little I, bit, I, a little bit off here, uh -oh. uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I got to reel you in, I'm I gotta reel you in a little bit sometimes. Dude, well, I, I get it because I'm into the I'm into the weird stuff, but uh, I'm liking where this is going. So go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, just to let our viewers know, Brian C. Weed is my. We direct. We're the directors of photography for Expedition Unknown, okay. uh, Expedition X, and everything that Ping Pong Productions does. We're the main guys. We're the look and feel of these shows. 
and Brian is, a, a, he's a, what did you say? He's a, 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 a he's a skeptic. And I'm which skeptic. is, which oh, is yeah. fine. We're totally fine. Yeah. And that doesn't mean, look, you can be a skeptic and still be open to yes. everything, which yes. I am. And I love it. And I'm vastly interested in it all, but I'm still a skeptic. And, and I think it's healthy to have different types of people who look into paranormal or cryptic mm -hmm. cryptid or, or, or any other supernatural subject, you know, you've got to have a healthy dose of skepticism as well as belief. Otherwise you'll fall for anything, you know? That's right. Mm -hmm. So I like it. That's I like right. it. And, and, I, and, I, and I challenge our audience to be that way as well. Yes. Um, because, you know, you got to be educated. It's like the politics almost. It's like, you got to be educated in both to talk about it. So, you know, that's yeah. Uh, Brian, I'm going to uh, uh, ask you a question if that's cool. It's kind of the, a similar question that I asked uh, Evan earlier, but so you've been on uh, multiple, I, I was looking through your IMDB kind mm -hmm. of getting, seeing what you've done. And so you've been, you know, expedition unknown genre, but you've yep. also been on other things in the past and Absolutely, you've been yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. So are you more apprehensive when you're on something like Expedition Unknown or when you're involved with something like Last Call with Carson Daly? Apprehensive. Like, what is like, do you mean? Oh, this could get a little dicey. <laughs> you know what? I've never, I don't think I've ever been on a production where things couldn't get a little dicey. That's kind okay, of the nature cool. of working in television. Sure. And especially with the fast pace and, and everything that's at stake. And you've got one chance to get it right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that applies across the board. You know, like if, if we're on Exhibition Unknown, you know, if we're on uh, Exhibition X, if something happens, man, let me tell you something, it's only going to happen once. Mm. And so yeah. if you don't, if you're not ready yeah. for it, no matter what it is, if you're not ready for it, you know, you better find a new job. Totally. That's awesome. So, yeah, it, yeah. It's like being a wedding photographer they're not going to have that first kiss again that's right <laughs> it's going to be one yeah. kiss boy you better get it you better nail and, it yeah, and yeah, it yeah. better be good you know yep. I, I did before i did this i i had done a lot of music I, i've done a lot of um uh video for uh different musicians I used to do behind the scenes for jennifer lopez i was i worked with taylor swift for oh, wow. a year on the red tour um i've done i've shot hundreds and hundreds of concerts for last call with carson daly and you know working with these musicians, working in these live events, these live venues, these concerts, like, I mean, magic moments happen, but you gotta, you gotta be there yep. ready to capture them all. Totally. So, that's awesome. That's what I do. Very cool. Very cool. Do you guys, do you mind if we go, uh, now that we have, uh, uh, Evan and, uh, Brian here, do you mind if we go through the photos and kind of have a, a commentary of the ones that you want to, to share Evan? Sure. Awesome. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to share my screen. Uh, let's go here. And let me know if you see this in a minute. You should start to see some stuff. Yeah, we see it. All right. So, yeah, let's just uh, – we'll go through the photos one by one. And any commentary uh, uh, you could have on why this is uh, special to you guys, go ahead. Wow. I mean, come on. This photo says – look at our faces, right? Our faces <laughs> are tired mm -hmm. but happy, yep. right? Right now – and I'm going to give this to – to Brian because he's Mr. Le he remembers stuff way more than I do. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. this wow. is basically Jane Goodall's research chimp. Uh, yeah, no camp so, yeah. So this is this. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the national forest in was it Zimbabwe. Uh, what country was that in? Stone, do you remember? Yeah, Zimbabwe. And so this is the uh, national park where she did Jane Goodall, Dr. Jane Goodall, did all of her yeah. chimp research. Wow. And so we were there to, um, this is when we were doing uh, uh, episodes on the first humans. And uh, wow. we were there to go and see these chimps that she had studied for so long, had found so many traits that were similar to human traits uh, to get a sense of what uh, early people, early, early, early humans may have uh, behaved like. Sure. So we had spent, this is toward the end of the day. We were not done, but it had been a long day of chasing these chimpanzees through this rugged, rugged jungle. And I mean, boy, if you've ever tried to chase a chimpanzee through a jungle, it is nope. not an easy task. <laughs> oh, I mean, they man. can go places we just cannot go. Ooh. So 
it's pretty exhausting. It's brutal. If they want to lose you, they will lose you in a second. Wow. And I mean, we were just running to try to catch it. And look, we were wearing masks before they were cool. This is pre-COVID. That's, that's true. I didn't even, it, our minds are so attuned to it now. I didn't even notice yeah. that that would have been right. Weird. So yeah, we had to wear, we had to wear those because uh, they were, they were concerned about spreading disease oh, from dear. human to chimpanzees. I mean, they're, they're such a closely related species to us that it's entirely possible for uh, diseases to jump between people and chimps. Wow, that's that's. I mean, amazing. this place was like, this place was like Kong Island. I mean, it's totally. it was, it was off a lake, and and you you drive this lake to this huge lake in in Zimbabwe, one huge lake. It's like an ocean, really. And you get to this area, and it's you look in the jungle, and you can hear ah, and all these, you know, chimps and man. These that things all around coming out. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then you know, because I grew up um watching Jane Goodall documentaries, and yeah. so this is like really special to us. And um, you know, these chimps can rip your arm off and like totally. oh, yes. eat your face, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, like so, and we're running around this jungle, and those cameras are 30 pounds or 35 pounds, and but you know, we're used to it, but you know, it was like the toughest job you'll ever love. You know, it was yeah, really I rewarding. It. Not I only that, one, but yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I remember one instance uh, on this day that uh, I was on a path like the one you see behind us there. Mm -hmm. And there were uh, a couple of chimps moving along in the jungle next to the path. And so they were tra kind of traveling parallel to it. And I was just hooping along with my camera as long as I could, trying to chase these, these uh, chimps and, and get good shots of it when all of a sudden they decided to stop and uh -huh. turn toward me, they were crossing the path to go to the other side and they were coming right at me. And, oh. and like Stone said, like if they want to, they could just rip your arm right out of its socket and yeah. eat it like a turkey leg. I mean, it's, yeah, totally. it's you know, it's, it's, that's the strength of these animals. And they went by me, one went right by me, but the other one went so close to me that it actually put his hand on my leg as, as like as if it were like a limb to use to help kind of Whoa. carry him across the path and i was about pissing my pants at that moment because i well, what yeah. do you do you can't move you can't run you know but yep. luckily you know that was a day that they didn't mind people around oh, and i should thank know goodness. too uh, i should know too um these all these chimps are the descendants of the same ones that jane goodall studied they're all part of they're all family ah. descendants they've been tra they still track them they still monitor them they're the exact same family descendants that is cool. That is really yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, and then bringing it back to Bigfoot, you know, it's yeah. Go ahead. This these chimps and and all this is there, and what we're doing is is early humans. And a lot of times when people talk about um, Bigfoot, it kind of harkens to like early. You're talking about it like a early human, really, that has both, you know, senses, like almost human, but you know, has this foot in like half of it's in the wild still has all these extra senses that animals have as the apex predator does that we've mm. lost so a lot of stuff is it's and i and again i and i challenge our viewers to do some research on early humans and chimps because you're going to know a lot about how bigfoot um reacts and how it and how it lives because it's pretty much the same thing i mean some people think you know bigfoot's a a mythical creature other people think it's it's a real thing and um so there, there's definitely you know similarities between early humans um uh, which before neanderthals i mean and um and bigfoot you know because there was a time in um in the earth where it was like middle earth there were like little people there was like oh it's crazy right <laughs> Right, yep. and they are all in, now we know they all intermix. Right, and that's there were we, multiple hominid species alive all at the same time over millions mm -hmm. of years. I mean, I think I think that humans and Neanderthals shared nearly six million years of time. You know, like well, not I guess maybe not not they probably weren't human human at that point. It's hard, you know, that the the whole like scale of time and how long we've been here and like it's. I can't even imagine. There's so many species that we don't, we'll never know about. There's no it's record. Wild, of, dude. Yeah. You know, and there's so many hominid species that that probably were a lot closer than we imagined. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Wow. That that was a, f a fascinating discussion from just one photo. That was so cool. Um, 
I don't have these in any specific order, so we might be bouncing around back and forth through time if that's cool. But let's go on to the next one here. And let's see. Let me move this over a bit here. So what do we see going on here? Yeah, buddy. Dream this Team. Destination Truth. The old Dream Team. Dream <laughs> Team. Season three. You know, we got, you know, you got me, of course. And you got Josh. Look at that young Josh Cates all spelt. Super Looking good. Thin. Yep. Yeah, he was so going. You don't have nearly as many wrinkles as, as you do now in that picture. <laughs> yeah, this is 12 years ago. Yeah, so this is 12 wow. years ago. We got uh, uh, on the, the, I guess on the right uh, on the picture is Gabe Kaplan. He was one of the cameramen. We have our, uh, next to him is um, our, um, we had a medic, Rex, on okay. set. Yep. Brian, we had a medic on set. Mm, okay, and this guy was ready for this guy's ready for us to get broken up. I mean, wow. and uh, we have Jael, and and then mm-hmm. uh, who I used to work with at Current TV, Al Gore's Current TV. We came out of doing social issue documentaries, and now she's doing this. Man, she loved it. She's from Queens, New York, too. So we're both the same. Uh, and then we have Bisha. Uh, our executive producer next to that. And to the left of me is Mike Morell. Uh, he was our sound man, full believer man, totally into it. And then nice, um, nice. Shara, and then interesting story, next to him is Shara Ramani. And Sh- I, uh, I, uh, I, she um, married one of our fixers in Egypt and they have children now. And she's oh, an, cool. now a wow. director of photography. She's amazing. So the cool thing about Destination Truth is every single person on this, on the crew was in it because why not i see something yeah. i hear something that yeah. you know it's like you know we're integrated in it. and it was a pretty really breakthrough situation and i was never on camera before that and i actually had to go on um casting session to get on the show they want oh, to know really if I could... oh, okay yeah, cool of course they want to know wow. if i could talk that is cool was... yeah and you know i'm a i'm a ham to be on dude camera. they picked I'm... the right guy man like <laughs> oh, totally yeah. Totally. So, uh, and then that's what Josh, Josh and me really bonded because when it got real shitty out there, mm-hmm. I was right with them. Like, let's, what, what is it? Let's go further. Let's, <laughs> let's go do it. extra because that's when you find stuff, you know, you're not doing a TV show that the clocks out. It's like, what more can we do? Let's go further. And, nice. um, so this on, on our fans think that season three is the best season with this crew. And I, and I kind of mm. think so. It was a well, good a crew. Bias, seven. <laughs> All right. Next up. Okay. What do we have? Who do we have here? Oh, wow. Well, this is, this is an actual, <laughs> this is Bobo from Finding Bigfoot. Yep. Um, and I'm not sure who the other guy is, but we were, we're, we're doing a pilot for his own TV show. Actually it never went anywhere, but Bobo and, and oh, I really? are, are yeah, Bobo and I are oh. real good friends. He's a very awesome guy. I could talk all about him. He's a character, but also he comes from Northern California. He comes from Humboldt. And I know a lot of Humboldt growers up there. And he knows all yeah. the growers like me. And also he's he's a surfer. He's from Manhattan Beach. He's also very steeped in Hawaiian culture and knows all the players in Hawaii. And I'm a surfer. So me and him bonded right away. Um, and chiefed out together and all this stuff. And it mean, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a real special bond. And this guy, we're up in Humboldt right here. And behind us is a bay. And what okay. we're doing is we're, we're diving for abalone. Oh, and wow. yeah. that day, Bobo got bumped by a shark. And because Ooh. there were seals everywhere, you couldn't see nothing. You're down there reaching for whatever. And it was really scary. Um, it was it was a cool moment. It was like, oh, I'm out. Man. Like, why would I go swimming? Like, sometimes <laughs> I think about like what I've done and I look back at pictures and be like, I would never do that unless yeah, why would I do on. that? Yeah, totally. Never. Oh, man. <laughs> Call that courage. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, eventually I'll, I'm going to talk to Bobo. He's on the list. Uh, you know, you always got the list of who's up next. But yeah. what what do we have going on here, Evan? Uh, yeah, come on now. This is this is a Bigfoot hunt we're doing, and um, this oh, is on the man. side of Mount St. Helen, and we're oh, taking wow. a Huey hel- a real Huey helicopter from the Vietnam War. Like, really? Like, yo, the Vietnam folks, they heard this is a sound of like 
freedom. It's like they're getting out. And totally. uh, there's a lot of helicopter rides in our business. And actually, we're doing one tomorrow, <laughs> Brian and I. And um, it's, it's a you tomorrow, too. Yeah, I know. It's a sketchy <laughs> biz, but uh, <laughs> what you usually do in a helicopter to get a good shot, you take the doors off. Oh, yeah, man. And you, and you just use like the you get strapped in or someone your assistant cameraman is like holding you and you just shoot out the window you shoot out of it it's one of the perks Oof. of being in the business you could do things like that. i I, yeah. I tell you what you know i i stone and i we've both done a lot of helicopters in our career of of filming these adventure tv shows yeah and man i i tell you every time you get in one it just sort of feels like like flipping a coin throwing the dice yeah. a little bit you know because <laughs> It's it it can get so scary and uh, especially when you got those doors off and everything in your body is telling you like what are you doing what are you oh, doing yeah, like sure. they, like don't they, like don't go up in the air with no door um, but you know you you do what you got to yeah. do to get the shot but uh, boy it, it can be stressful but super fun too it's it's very exhilarating they say it's the number one killer of cameramen um, yeah. uh, helicopters wow. there's been some terrible terrible accidents. Uh, oh, boy through history of production of uh, helicopter accidents and, and cameramen. Mm. And, so. and, and this is this is from Finding Bigfoot season one. Um, okay. There you go. Wow, very cool. Uh, speaking of, uh, I believe this would probably be Finding Bigfoot, maybe. What do we have here? Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, this is yeah. season one, Finding Bigfoot. Um, now, you, you know this because of Bobo how he looks you know Bobo's yes. lost a ton of weight since he looks so good um, now yeah 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 so but this is like yo these ladies Matt Moneymaker is you know mm -hmm. there's Renee there and my camera crew down below um, wait is that Moneymaker there, right there in the green right here uh, yes, yep. 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 yeah yeah and also there's Brad Coleman the owner of Ping Pong Productions on the left right. so that's why I know this is the pilot episode um okay and yeah because you know, pilot episodes, the bosses come and they make sure, you know, like, like we got to make it good. Um, and I didn't, <laughs> right. yeah, the, the, you know, uh, I didn't know anything about Bigfooting and I didn't. And, but I'm um, game for, I mean, I'm totally want to learn, right? Mm -hmm. And I could, I can, could, this is a good segue into one of my stories. Um, a pilot episode we're in. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, pilot, ep pilot episode of Finding Bigfoot. You know, these pilot episodes like make it or break it, right? Mm -hmm. And so you don't know what you're going to get when you get out there. And I didn't even know what we're doing, really. And we went out to Prince William Island in Alaska. And this is like okay. one of the remote islands that like, and no one's on it. And, and this is the first time I realized that Bigfoot's real you know and i was out there with bobo and he was doing call and response you know he's like oh yeah, yeah. I'm like you know yep. i mean i was like whatever i was like this is cool i'm like to me i'm like <laughs> i'm like ah oh, come on i want to i want to believe in something that 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 is that that's that we can't explain you know and i think everyone mm. does and that's why they believe, mm. really and and in the distance and this is an island no one's on it. I mean, this is a fucking, yeah. this is really remote. And I heard, we heard back like miles away. Oh, man. And, and I said, what, what was that? He goes, that yeah. was a Bigfoot. And I was like, oh. And then we did knocks and then we heard knocks back and all this stuff. And I was like, you know, and these guys are dead serious. If they found someone messing around, would that person be fired? I mean, like. Yeah, totally. That this like there's no joke is not I can totally say that they 100% believe and they don't they demand everyone else like that is no shenanigans. Right. Um, they demand everyone respects that. And mm. they're on a legitimate hunt. You know, yes. they're not out. Yep. They're not out like, oh, we, you know, we got to make a TV show. So let's, you know, make this happen. Let's do this. Let's put a, you know, put a string on a chair like, you know, and pull something like some of these ghost shows do. I'm not going to mention any names. Uh, but, yeah, don't get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, these guys are out there legitimately hunting, legitimately hunting and, and they mean business. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, I agree with you a hundred percent. I've heard them say it, you know, they, yeah, they mean, I mean business and, totally. And, and they're really experts. Like they know everything about it. Every, mm -hmm. how they move, how they um, eat, what they eat, what they're it's it's amazing 
And the more you speak to them, um, the more you're like, wow. I mean, you could tell that they're not fucking around because they're mm -hmm. just, yep. you could tell when someone's lying in oh, yeah. you could totally yeah. tell. And yeah. there's no way. And I think that's why they went over a hundred seasons in that show. And it's a Crazy. huge success. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, Matt Moneymaker had the BFOR before the show. This is not yes, like, of course, of course. Yeah. 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 So, man. Oh man. I, yeah, I uh, talked to Moneymaker someday too. I, I love, I would love to interview his intensity. You can tell he's got to be the most intense guy you've ever met. Like, he's just like, yeah. <laughs> he's great. He lives in the moment. He's amazing. Yep. And the more you talk to him, the more you're like, you want to, he's like a conversationalist. He's like a storyteller. It's amazing. Mm. Yeah. Let's go on to, uh, I like that. This is a, a well-taken photo of uh, now I know, you know, uh, I knew who Evan was before, but like, this is a great picture of both of you. What's the uh, story behind this one? Oh, so, well, you know, me, yeah. You want to, you tell a story of this one, Stone, go for I it. I mean, you know, he's my boy, you know, like we, we always, <laughs> we're the yin and the yang, you know, like I'm full gonzo. I'm, I'm my, you know, I'm super professional and my focus is always t tight and everything like that. But my style is like gonzo, right? It's kind of mm. like, ah, get the, be in the moment. <laughs> And Brian's like the opposite. He's like ev ev super professional and 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 re reins me in to be mm. like better. Um, okay. And I'd like to think that I do the same and, and kind of help him out in that sense that, Definitely you know, do. I'm wild and woolly, you know, and he's like super laser like, you know, and we're a great team. You know, we, wow. we, we are. We, and, like, and, and we rub off on each other like like Stone's Gonzo has rubbed off on me and I love getting into that and I make sure that some of my laser laser professionalism rubs off on him when he needs it. it. And, and we keep each other balanced really, really well. Yeah. Very and cool. you know, it's a lesson for people that like, you know, iron sharpens iron, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like hundred percent, you know, and <laughs> you need, you need to have friction. You can't be, if you're the director of the director of and everything's your way, it's not going to be good, man. You know, you need to, 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 get in there and mix it up and, and have two points of view. And mm. we're always mm -hmm. like, we're not agreeing on everything and, and it's okay. Um, and it makes the project better. It really does. I love that. I love that. That's one of the, the top lessons I try to put forth in this show is that you can have a discourse and learn from someone you don't a hundred percent agree with. People need to learn that that is, a, that's yeah. a skill that our culture needs. Like that's awesome. Exactly. You brought that up. Well, you got to put your ego in check too. Totally. You know, you yeah. have to be like, mm, he's right. I'm going to, you know, and I'm yep. going to work yep. on that. And it's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. Whew. What's this about? That's the cold right there. <laughs> that looks this cold. Is, yeah, that's totally cool. This is we. This is taken up on uh, the Atlas Pass in uh, the Ural Mountains of Russia. Which, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the story of the uh, yes. nine hikers that passed yes. away on that pass under extraordinarily extraordinarily <sighs> mysterious circumstances yes uh and we went up there uh at the same time of year february that those hikers went through that pass and we went up to that oh, path man it was about 50 degrees below zero um you can see that's josh gates there on the left that's me in the middle 11 stone on the right okay stone. and uh man that was it was wild i mean one of the craziest and most rewarding trips we've ever taken for expedition unknown i'd say wow yeah and and i i can add to that it's it's okay first of all the most dangerous you know you you can you take off your clothes you're dead i mean like sure. you know you, you know you see those suits are wearing that's everything we're wearing and then yeah. one of those suits and wow. they're like space suits man i mean they are like space <laughs> everything's full head to toe like you get in it you're in it like stay puff marshmallow uh, like kind of bouncing around <laughs> on the moon but you know i told you before brian came on i told you that you know the shittier it gets the more fun we have this is exactly exactly i mean i you yeah. know, i say this all the time there's two kinds of fun in the world you know the first kind of fun is like the roller coaster having a blast fun Mm -hmm. You know, but but that's the kind of fun that in five years you're not looking back and saying, "Hey, remember that time we rode a roller coaster?" No, 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 no. That, that's just that's just bubblegum fun. Second mm. type of fun is a kind of fun that's just shitty, shitty, shitty when you're going through it. Yep. But yep. later 
you look back on it and you're saying, I can't believe how awesome that was. I love that. And what That's a mystery. Cool. And what, I mean, really, what a mystery. I mean, this yep. mystery is like, you know, these, these hikers died in the most, in a really, really weird way. Like, even Brian's like, I don't know. I mean, he's usually like, this is what happened. But right. like, I have a theory. I have a theory, but there's no way to prove it at this point, I think. But I do well, have I would, a what, what is it? I would love to, like, if someone well, from let your... Me set, let me set up, yeah. let me set the okay. table up for, for the okay, viewers cool. who don't know. All right. And um, yep. these, the, one of the, the national, Russian national, like, mysteries, it's like they're, you know, uh, a JFK murder type of thing is how these sure. nine campers how died and how they died. They were experts. They were basically like Eagle Scouts, right? They're on their mm. way for their final mission mm -hmm. to get their check marks. And these are Russian. So what? Teams. Yeah, yeah. What What do you have to understand about Russia at this time, which was the late fifties, was right. that expeditions like this were a really, really popular sport, especially for university students. You know, I mean, it's like, 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 like American football, like fo college football is for us today. You know, like, I mean, these guys, it was a sport. People were all in and, and it really mattered to them to push the limit and, and get, uh, you know, the highest award certifications or, or whatever they can get possible. And, one, and this was going to be the, uh, this particular expedition for them was going to give them that highest level, basically what wow. said, the, the Eagle Scout. Okay. And, you know, they have to submit, they have to submit what they're going to do, they get it approved, and they're going to go off and they're going to do this mission and they get back and they, you know, they're, they're like the best, you know, student expedition uh, hikers, you know, in the country. It's a big, big deal. Wow. So that's the preface. That's what they, that's what they've set out to do in case anybody's right. wondering why, were, why were they even there? This is the right. Point. So, so they, they make their way up to this pass, which is five, five days travel by, you know, it's just in the middle in February. Okay. Er, that's like hardcore Man. and snow up to your waist river, frozen rivers. I mean, hardcore. Wow. Yeah. We're talking Siberia and, and they make it up to this pass and never come back. They find they send a search party out from and they find the tent ripped out from the inside and they mm -hmm. find their bodies eventually in really weird places. Yeah. They were half Shattered. naked. One had their tongue taken out. One had mm -hmm. their eyes taken out. Um, they the one had so, uh, the girl's clothing on. Like they had to rush out real oh, quick. No. And their footprints right. they found on the edge of the forest. Like they were looking at the tent and they wanted to come back, but they couldn't. And, they and all some died. had internal, some had internal injuries as well. Yes. Uh, yes. Internal organ in, uh, uh, injuries. So, and yeah, they were scattered all about like, you know, maybe, maybe 200 yards downhill from the past. There was a tree line. Some of them were found down there. You know, others were found like fallen off a, off a right. small cliff into a, uh, into like a little Creek. Mm -hmm. um, but they were scattered. Their bodies were scattered. You know, so and, like, and how did how did they die? Why did they do this? Did they go insane? Did they, um, you know, what theories are wild? You know, UFOs, uh, military experiments, um, mm -hmm. and you know what? We went up there and we experienced the same time and that same type of storms they were in. Scary mm. man. Oh, Scary. man. We we're with them. I badass russians but i mean you know, yeah we were <laughs> they were amazing i mean they were amazing That's awesome uh i love we we uh for the first portion you know before we had to switch to snowmobiles and and eventually hiking uh for the first portion we rode these amazing old soviet transport uh oh, yeah. vehicles armored transport vehicles but they each had a wood stove inside oh no way i thought it was so crazy like to be sitting like in this in this like old soviet armored vehicle like feeding wood into a stove to stay warm <laughs> that's oh, cool man it was so yeah. crazy um so but yeah do you, yeah do you mind sharing your your theory i i don't mind sharing my theory okay. and, and it's you know it's born out of reading a lot of research into other people's theories and then just our own experience of being out there um, but there are certain things that I noticed when we were out there that, that kind, of, kind of led me to this. Um, so first of all, one of the big things that struck me about being on the, on the pass is the amount of uh, electromagnetic interference of mm. that area. So mm -hmm. I fly the drone uh, primarily for Ecclesian Unknown. Okay. Uh, and 
these drones operate with an internal compass, mm. you know, so they know which way they're facing, which way they're going. Like it just helps to stabilize the drone every time. And Stone, I don't know if you remember this, but every time I put that drone up, it would just, I mean, it had a mind of its own. You tell it to go forward, it would go to the left. You tell it to go back, it would go to the right. Wow. You know, it, it, it just, there was no, it was like, and it kept giving me um, a compass error, you know, on, on my screen that I'm, that I'm watching as I uh, uh, remotely operate this thing, just compass error, compass error, compass, you know, big red letters telling me to bring it down. It can't figure out where it is in, in the world. Like it just can't triangulate itself. So uh, I, I talked to a few people, uh, a few of the Russians we were with in that area, um, some of our guides, and they did say that that area is known for electromagnetic interference. It does have oh. like even the military has problems with compasses there. And there is a military base a few hours away. Now, this is going to lead into second part of my theory. Uh, the Manzi people, which are like a local indigenous tribe that live uh, in the area, uh, rep and they live near that Ural Pass uh, there that the uh, hikers went through, they reported that night seeing lights. Oh. Lights in the sky. Okay. So, uh, but, you know, other than that, they have no idea what had happened. Uh, at one point, some of them were, people thought, well, maybe it was there, like one of them might have killed those kids, but that's been pretty soundly debunked, and, and mm. they've denied even uh, being up there. They did help some of the searchers uh, locate the, the, the dead hikers, though. Uh, so, you know, so lights in the sky, compass errors, there was a particular uh, investigative report, report from one of the investigators that noticed in the area burnt treetops. Mm. Uh, like the tips of some of these tall pine trees in the area oh, had wow. some, so just the tops were burnt, not the lower portions of the trees. Very peculiar. Um, but there was one, and also I brought up earlier the, uh, uh, the internal organ damage of yes, some of the hikers. Yes. So there's one particular military weapon that the Russians have been known to use. They used it since World War II, and they've used it as recently as uh, in Syria uh, okay. in the war and fighting that's been going on there. There's something called a parachute mine. And really? essentially, essentially, these are uh, small, like, like a mine, like, like, a, like, a, like a bomb, but uh, drop them with parachutes to slowly fall down, and they'll explode, at uh you know 50 100 feet in the air okay they're designed to bring down buildings in an urban area hmm. uh, which is why they explode so high up but what happens is that it, it, they have an incredible uh concussive force they, they just release a huge huge just wall of pressure that can uh, that can cause internal injuries uh okay. and people that's from that concussive force. Oh, My wow. theory and guess is based on all this kind of circumstantial evidence uh, and anecdotal evidence is that there was a military uh, testing run of uh, munitions of these parachute hmm. mine munitions from that base several. And I think they force uh, due to compass error. And, you know, this is back when, you know, in the late 1950s, you're, you're operating with a slide rule and you're doing math and you're right. looking at a hand yeah. pump, but that's how you're navigating in an airplane, especially at night. Wow. So yeah. they get off course, they start dropping these parachute mines on this area of the Ural Mountains and through the pass, these things start exploding. I mean, think about it. If you're in a tent, you're having a great day, and then all of a sudden these <laughs> massive Man. explosions start going off in the air above you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to cause panic. Oh, no, totally. Immediately. Yeah. Your first yeah. thing is, uh, your first reaction is going to be, I got to get out of here. You know, I've got to go. And so they're going to do what those students did. They're going to get a knife. They're going to rip open that tent, you know, maybe mm -hmm. because somebody tried to run out the front and the tent started collapsing. So they're ripping it open with a knife to get out. They're running out without their clothes on because at this point, nothing matters. It right. doesn't matter what you're wearing. You just got to, you're yep. under attack. Yep. You're getting bombed. You That's very get interesting. Yeah. So my thought is, you know, and that would explain why only treetops were burned uh, and not necessarily 
lower portions of trees, or not at all lower portions of trees, only treetops. And there was also some uh, uh, metal fragments, like large metal fragments that uh, were found that the thought was maybe this was, could have been a missile test. I don't think these were from missiles. I think it, they were from these parachute mines. And a lot of times these things are dropped with flares. You know, they'll, they'll drop flares first to kind of get a, a visual on the target for where the, uh, for where the test, uh, the munition test is gonna happen. So plane goes through, drops some flares. These are the lights that the Manzi people see. And then the next thing you know, these, uh, these parachute mines are coming through. And so that's, that's what I think, that's what I yeah. think happened. What a cool theory. Uh, and I mean, the thing is, we'll never know maybe You'll what never the true know. story is, but that's a, that's a crazy theory. Uh, right. I mean, interest, I'm sorry. I don't mean crazy theory, but I mean, interesting theory as in like, <laughs> yeah, right. I, I think it's cool. One thing's for sure. If the yeah. military did it, they would never admit to it. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. They'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll never say, Oh yeah, that was us. Sorry guys. I, I, I kind of have a, a different theory. You know, I think that, you know, and, and this goes to a lot of UFO sightings and um, sure. strange lights, is that I think that the Earth, you know, when the Earth has these, and I agree it has magnetic issues, this particular range um, created, and because of the weather was so cold and it was a storm going on, it created these kind of like plasma balls and like these like things mm. that, that are that are real um, and um, that the same thing happened, but it wasn't military. It was a natural phenomenon that, that, that happened and these balls that just vibrate and create and, um, and this past some, somehow created it in this perfect environment, this perfect setup and the same thing. And then at that point, the same thing happened. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Uh, guys, I do want to uh, be pause for a second just to check. Are we okay with uh, just do a time check? I want to be, uh, sure. you know, okay with uh, be respectful of your time. I guess I would say. Sure. Um, sure. Um, if, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm good. Uh, yeah, I, I okay. think we're all right. Cool. Yep. Um, I think we're 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 getting we're going through the pictures here. Let's let's move on to the next one here. So. Um, and if it's something we've already experienced, uh, yeah, feel free to just do a summary. That's fine. That looks yeah, like that's that Huey. That's a big Huey again, and that's cool. what we—that's what we took up that mountain, and uh, that's our crew talking about what we're gonna do, and and that's uh, Dave Farkas, the other DP at the time, and myself. Okay. And uh, we're uh, we're just ready to go. That's awesome. You know? That's awesome. Let's see. We've got, yeah, we and this is it looks like a very similar photo to before. So it's the same the... photo. Yeah, I must have gave you two. Oh, it is. Oh, well, that's why. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and we got another shot of the gang here. Dream team. You got it. Come on now. I am curious about the next one here. Okay. What's, oh, yeah. what's going on with this oh, guy? You know here? this. I can that talk looks like you're this. down in the Everglades. That's yeah. right. We're looking, we're on Finding Bigfoot season one, and we're looking for the swamp ape. And this is. Okay. Uh, it's a Bigfoot that's in the Everglades and it's known for its smell. Um, and that's why they call it the swamp ape. Um, or it has this, this really nasty smell. And uh, hey man, that dude next behind the guy in the blue, that's a real believer. He's the one who saw it, is bringing oh, us wow. there. This guy behind um, uh, the front guy is the guy with the beard and the, and the glasses on. He, okay. um, you know, these, we always, connect with people who have saw it and they bring us to the location and then we do a investigation in that area sure. i tell you the everglades are magical i mean you go deep mm, in there and it's like there's no there's no old folks home here man this is like <laughs> this is the real that's right wilderness and, look, and you'll see stuff you'll see never imagine you would see in the everglades uh, really? every time, i mean you'll see giant pythons uh last time i was there i saw bears i didn't know oh, that wow. there are bears in the everglades but yep Bears. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> it's, it's, believe also, it. It's, it's also a magical place. I mean, I think that, a, you know, one of my theories is that, you know, that the earth, when it's in pure nature, creates, uh, it creates these portals, you know, mm. to other dimensions. Sorry, um, uh, Brian, talking about it. And I think that's <laughs> why. Brian's that's like, why. bring He's it on. There. Let's go. He's going, going to there. the other dimension. <laughs> We're going there. And, yeah, and why not? <laughs> Truth be told, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much a believer that Bigfoot 
um, is is in that world, and also that when nature's okay. real pure, it opens up a portal that uh, whatever culture you're in, you see what you want, whether it's uh, you know fairies, leprechauns, and all these myths and stuff that that a lot of people think are that or are this or Bigfoot, you know. Um, so that's what I think because you never see Bigfoot in a Central Park. You see it in this, this pure environments of nature. And if you go back to American Indian culture, uh, Native American, any any tribe has mm-hmm. their hairy people tribe and their warriors. Totally. Yep. You will go back in time and you could do the research. Every single one talks about it. And American Indians, uh, Native Americans, they their god was nature. You know, mm. and why not, huh? Come on, let's talk mm. about it, <laughs> right? You know, and, you know uh, what? I, I just want to I just want to add in here that all right, go ahead. Of your any of your listeners that think that Evan is making this up right now, making it like just making it up off the top of his head, he has had this same theory. He's been telling me this since the day I met him. This is very well wow. thought out. He's very convinced. He knows. He knows what he believes. I, thank you for putting that light on. I was just about to come over to your hotel room and put a light on your phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, this is not, he is not just pulling this stuff out of his butt right now. He, uh, he legitimately has thought about this a long time. That's awesome. I think so. I mean, give nature a fucking break, you know? Like, yeah, well, yeah totally. Cool. And yeah. also, truth be told, I talked about it before. You pave that world, you pave all that, all that mana, all that stuff doesn't come up anymore. You're not getting mm-hmm. any anything. And that is the real deal is nature and energy. Hey, we all know now that plants yeah. now vibrate and speak to each other. We all know That's that. Right. We don't they all do communicate. communicate. They communicate uh, through all kinds of ways. They communicate chemically. They, uh, you know, they're, they're just as alive, alive as anything else. That has That's been right. scientifically and, proven, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also, yep. and also, fungi. I mean, uh, is connected inside the whole earth, and they all speak to each other. This, this is a wild idea that's now accepted. Hmm. So very cool, you know. very cool. Uh, last picture, and I'm really interested about what the story is for this one. So, yeah, what's this? <laughs> like, okay, so we are. What is happening right yeah, here? Yeah, right. Well, we're having fun. We're letting yeah. loose, you know. We, we awesome. look at all our faces. We look like we've been eh, drinking out in the wilderness forever, <laughs> like, you know, on expedition. And these are expeditions, you know. We're yeah. for real when we go out there. We go out there for 10 days at a story. And sometimes we're out there, we're sleeping in tents. We're not in hotels a lot of times, and we're doing it. And it looks like we came back and tied one on and are just having fun, you know. And oh, Bobo is, is such a great guy. This is a night that Bobo was like a cowboy getting paid. He we went to this local <laughs> bar in Oregon, and he's like drinks for everybody. And then uh, we just had a blast. I mean, he's That's good cool. like that. He's a yeah, real yeah. He seems like a good guy. dude. Like a good dude. He yeah. is. Wow. He is. We got through the photos. That was awesome. Like those stories were amazing. Thank you guys. I'm gonna attempt to stop the screen share and hope it doesn't mess anything up. So let's do that. Uh, okay, good. We're, we're good. All right. Thank goodness. Um, I, so I have some, uh, a, a few more, uh, some, some more questions for you. I am curious about for each of you, what is the most amazing thing you've caught on camera during your time as a mm. cameraman? Or, mm. Uh, mm. Director oh my goodness. So many. I know. I know. Right. right? Sure. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm gonna have to think about it for a hot second. What do you got something to tell the most amazing thing I captured on camera, let's see, it's, oh, so many. It's, let's see, God, so much stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to even go there, you know? A lot of the stuff though is when, I, okay, here's a good one. When okay. I was in the, the, the oldest part of the Great Wall of China, we we're doing mm-hmm. a story on the, the ghosts of Great Wall of China and for Destination Truth. and we were this place is like they when someone died they buried them in there i mean this is like okay. you can't even go there you got to like hike up and it's like real crumbled and stuff and you know i was with josh and josh doesn't really believe in ghosts that much you know and he's not one to like play into it at all and i was filming him and i saw him get like moved like his backpack Whoa. boom and he goes what and he looked back and i said that wasn't me man 
and he Ooh, just went man. flush like that and i was like oh wow and he just was like Whoa. it was really <laughs> really that's just one of many that was ah wow it, insane that is um, cool that's cool yeah man. how about you b yeah I don't know. You know, I, I think one of the weirdest things I ever got on camera that I didn't have any explanation for uh, is when we were we were filming um, on Easter Island. Oh, okay. uh, and right. I mm. was up. I got up at like two or two thirty in the morning to go okay. film a, uh, a time lapse uh, uh, of um, because I, I, you know, I had to, I had to wait until the moon was gone, and then I was going to go get a time, like a stars time lapse, uh, over one of these Easter Island Moai statues, mm. and I, I had set the camera up, and I just was letting it roll and do its thing, and I was just kind of hanging out and, you know, having something to drink and chilling, and I was with my producer, uh, I think is it Joe on that one, Stone? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. uh, I think I was, I was sitting there with Joe, and we were just talking, and you know, we let it go for a good hour hour and a half uh and then i got back with the footage uh early in the morning just the sun was starting to come up and i'm i went through and i was i was reviewing the the time lapse and i was kind of scrubbing through it kind of playing it on fast forward so i kind of see what it looked like and suddenly caught my eye and uh there was this white blob that just went flying from behind camera and then turned wow and and it did it you know, the, the camera was in real time. This is not time lapsed. You know, this is because a lot of times I'll shoot, uh, I'll, I'll shoot something in real time so that if production wants to take a portion of it and show it in real time, or they can take this whole chunk of footage and kind of squeeze it and put it on fast forward. And then you've got a time okay. lapse, It'll, you know, but so I was watching it and in real time, this thing just blazed by going sort of, I don't know. It looked like it was way high above, you know, but going toward behind the Moai statue. And it just makes this almost a 45 degree turn but not quite and it just goes whoop and and just turns off and is gone and mm. you know when you stop and look at it frame by frame there's no real definition to it it's just uh, it's white and mm. it's it's just a solid kind of kind of white oval that just goes and is gone i have no idea man, that would no be idea. the craziest weird thing ever man and, it, and it, I, I mean, I have no, I have nothing to say to it. You know, you okay, can see yeah. if you if you watch yeah. the extraterrestrial special, um, there's this. Uh, we did a uh, we did a section where I sit in a um, in a video bay with Josh, and we're kind of going through and uh, uh, looking at all of these um, UFO videos. And a, a lot of times, I can look at a video, you know, that someone says this is a UFO, and I can look at it and say, like, well, no, it's not. And here's how you can tell: you do this, you do this, you light, you lighten the the shadow you bring down the highlights you you kind of check everything and you can reveal typically what it actually is you can look at the way the object moves and kind of tell what it is uh you know this this is the old, one of two i think i saw that day you know this one i, I couldn't explain the camera yeah. was locked off on a tripod no one was touching it uh and it was just rolling and and you know there's plenty of time before and after and right in the middle it just comes right through and flies off that is i would be it, i'd be freaked out man and it was moving way faster than any kind of um wow you know commercial airline could travel like no, no nothing could could be going this fast no kind of airplane that i know of could be going this fast plus you would be able to see uh if it was airplane you'd be able to see possibly outline of a wing you know or even just like a a blink you know they have the blinking lights on them i don't know man i don't know what to say about it it was real weird plus you're on easter island not much flies out over easter island Oh, you man. know just for I, fun I, yeah I, i'm I, sure I, it's not <laughs> i have something uh, that I, I was thinking about um i'm on yeah uh, go ahead I do, I do that show ghost nation as well oh yeah and sure in, and we're in those dudes are the same thing as money maker and them they're yep, real they're dude, in man. it dude they're in they it they don't mess around yep and um they're for real and yeah you can tell they're not, at, they're, you know, those dudes, you know, and it's cool when you're in that as a filmmaker, you're like, it's process. It's like, oh, I sure. love this. You know, they're, it's like, why, it's like filming someone like creating something, you know, and um, he, we walk between these two buildings that were adjoined from at different times and they both were haunted. So these ghosts were kind of like meeting up with each other and 
it was a kind of a bad vibe. It was a, a tattoo uh, parlor Yikes. and they were getting straight up hassled. Ooh. And um, w- um, one of the guys, the, the, um, he walks through a doorway, the doorway where the two buildings meet or they used to, like they meet now, but you know, the, the building, uh, they put them together. And um, he goes, whoa, I feel something. I was like, ooh, I feel something weird. And right when he said that, my camera clipped out. It started oh, right, snap. and that that just doesn't happen, right? Ooh. And it's like these cameras are just rolling, right? I said bloop, and I was like, oh, and I didn't say anything, right? Yeah. So afterwards, I said, hey, you know, my right when you said that, just want to let you know that my camera freaked out. And then we're, you know, yeah. he was like, put a camera on us, and we started talking. And I yeah. and I want to know like what's what. Ha- so we played back the two clips, and then. My assistant Cameron said, there's, there's a minute missing out of this, like a time code slip. So we're like, time was missing. It was like a time slip. Oh, and you know, it was like yep. sci-fi yep. movie stuff. It was totally, like yeah, sci-fi totally, yeah. movie fuel, like nightmare fuel. I was like, oh gosh. And like, it's just unexplainable. But it was like, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, um, spirits do. They mess with electronics. Mm. They, yep. they confuse you. There's all mm-hmm. these things that repetitively happen, which is not a coincidence. It's just because it just happens all the time. And uh, so there's something, that, you know, it's something there. Man. Did it almost place. make you believe or you're, you know. Man, let me tell you something. Yeah. Here's the thing about me. I'll tell you when I'll believe. All right. I'll, all right. I'll believe. Yeah, yeah. I will believe when I see just, either see one myself or I see irrefutable proof, you know, I don't, I don't mean like grainy, okay. you know, grainy, shaky video, which look for anybody that's like, well, how come this is all we have? When you see something like that, your adrenaline is pumping so sure. hard. Sure. I understand. I understand why it's difficult to get the proof because when you see something like that, your adrenaline's going, your heart's pumping. And when, when things are, moving in your body like that, it's very difficult to have fine motor control. You're not going to be a cool cucumber and take out a camera and hold a video. Right, nice and yeah, steady. It's, not, it's just yeah. not going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's never going to happen. So, yep. I mean, I get it. It's, this, is, this is a tall order, but being someone that, that likes to take a scientific approach to everything, that's what I need to truly believe. Do I want it to be true? Absolutely. Do I think it's possible that it could be true? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Do I actually believe that it is true? I don't know at this point. You know, even Fair though enough. I've gotten plenty of like, okay, maybe. All right, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I don't have anything for me personally that would make me say, yep, that's it. You know, but who's to say I that? Respect that. And, and I respect I am that, open. Brian. I'm open to that for sure. Okay. Very and, cool. And Brian's cool. heard, like we all have on these hunts, knocks yells yep, yep. sure yep. i um, bet he's heard like it all things, yep. yep getting thrown at us like mm-hmm. all that stuff but yep. he you know he takes other me i'm like you know, ah, it, it, <laughs> I know, that was like ah, da, 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 da. you know for me i can always be like well maybe that's an echo you know especially when it's an eye you don't see what kind of what kind of mountain and canyon wall things are bouncing off of and sure you know could be an echo here could be like you know, another thing there, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's, that's one of those things where you can make of that kind of evidence, what you want to make out of it. But for a skeptic, we, you know, a skeptic's going to need more. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. That's, that's cool. I respect you for, for your beliefs on that. That's, yeah. Thanks for sharing that, man. I will say, you know what, one of my favorite, one of my favorite things was uh, when we went to the, uh, you know, the, there's that Bigfoot museum that they have up there. North American um, Bigfoot Center. Yeah, the North American. Yeah, so with Cliff, I love yeah. that place. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. he's done a great job, yeah. and I think oh, it's has. a really cool place. My yeah. favorite, my favorite kind of like evidence, my favorite um, uh, bit of bit of uh, anecdotal sighting there is the. Uh, are you aware of, of the Nutella trap? You know about this yes. one? Yes. Yeah, I know oh exactly God. what you're talking about. Yeah, it's. Cool. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I don't know if I love it because it's like the best evidence in the world, but I think I just love it because <laughs> who doesn't love Nutella? It's and it sort fun, of makes yeah. me identify with Bigfoot a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It makes me feel like we have something now. 
you know? So like, cause That's I would awesome. totally be three fingers in that Nutella, just munching it up. So I, I love that part. I thought, I thought that, you know what, if there's a good foot, of course he loves Nutella. I agree. I tell you, Very cool. I tell you what, and we, and you know, we can finish on this is that yeah. the, the act of Bigfoot hunting, I don't know what you, you guys call it, but the, the act of going out into the woods and doing all that is way worth it because what you're doing is you're connecting with nature and you're accepting that there's something out there that maybe that not everyone knows everything and i think once you do that and you get out there you're gonna you're gonna hear the knocks you're gonna Mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna do all that because you've you know you're out there and you're out of the city man and you're in the nature and you're accepting that maybe there's something out there all of a sudden these things come to you and there's a Mm. reason for that because and then this is me again is that because you're in pure nature and also there's a part of humans that is telepathic that can see ghosts but we just suppress it you know what i'm saying because of modern stuff and and their doors of perception are just so shut that when you get out there and you get a hint of something that's why kids see stuff and people maybe on the spectrum see stuff or stuff that that, mm, that we interesting just can't hold. and so i uh, you know everyone out there just go out go out and sit in the woods at night and mm-hmm. and and try to just empty your thoughts of 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 the stress and the, the relationships and all these things that are getting on you and watch what happens yeah. i will say I will say like Evan brings up a really good point about, uh, you know, going out and experiencing and, and, uh, you know, being the dangerous thing about being a skeptic is that you kind of build these walls up around Mm. that, you know, you don't, you're not then opening to, to what might be out there. You know, it's, it's, it's an easy thing for a skeptic to have this attitude of, well, we know, we know everything, we know it all. Like we're, you know, we already have it figured out. And if, if you don't leave yourself open to the possibility that there's so much that we just have no clue about, you're gonna miss the discoveries. You know, mm, you're not gonna mm-hmm. progress further. and you know, I think one of the things that's so attractive about Bigfoot and ghosts and all this stuff is, is, you know, we, we need discovery. We need to believe there's more out there to discover. And I, for totally. one, a hundred percent believe that there is so much more to discover. And, and mm. I think all the time, you, know, you see these. Uh Oh, uh, we have lost Brian's audio. Uh Oh, Oh, are you there? Okay, Sorry, I cool, cool. Here. Oh, you're good. Uh, so, you know, you, you start to think that. Sorry, I lost my train of thought totally. Oh, much. yeah, that's uh, fine, man. That's fine. Oh, uh, right. sorry about that. Um, no, but, uh, you know, we, we want to have a belief. We want to believe yes. that there's something out there that can still be discovered because if you don't believe that, you're not going to try to discover the new things. You know, there's. Mm-hmm matches what can be out there mm. there we go it's impossible for us to imagine what can really be out there so you got to leave exactly. yourself a possibility that the unimaginable exists i love that man guys go. i am be- beyond thankful to you for coming on if there's anything i can do to help are there projects you're working on are there things that you can plug it all the for my listeners to go check out like please go ahead right now oh, for sure i mean check out expedition, expedition unknown yeah. uh but expedition x is starting i believe november 11th oh is that right Stone? wow yep. yep the new season That's of expedition soon. x starts airing on november 11th this is season two okay uh, this has been a really exciting project for me and evan to film and fantastic uh, we've had a lot of fun being in some spooky crazy places and seeing some really crazy stuff and and just having a lot of fun uh so definitely check it out yeah expedition x and and uh and he's right you know we put ourselves 
in the this isn't like not like a ghost hunt we go to like a uh, an old hotel or anything and like we go to places that are the epicenter of where things happened and you do that enough uh, man every time something <laughs> happens it's crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like again because we're we're pretty true to the game brian and i we quiet up everyone turn their lights off yeah you know an hour in we start to, to hear something and so you know it's like you gotta you gotta do it right and then yeah. to get results you really do wow. and uh you know we're uh we're always putting ourselves in that situation and it's really a unique and i tell you when i finally go lulu i go bye-bye i'm gonna like my hands will be crossed i'm gonna say i did everything be like that was every awesome mystery, yeah yeah every mystery in the world that's so cool you know and uh, and we like to give it to our audience and that that's mm. uh, our gift awesome i love it well thanks again for for coming on guys and um to all the listeners thank you for uh for listening every week um yeah we'll see you next week and thanks again to evan and brian thank you. instagram stone films earth <laughs> <laughs> yes, Brian, do you have it? See, that's what I'm Instagram trying to say. Do you have at, social media? Uh, Instagram at Brian C. Weed. Same for Twitter. Cool. I'll put it all in the show notes. Don't worry, guys. Awesome. awesome. Copy that. Have a good one. All right, guys. Thank you so much. See ya.